You ever notice how we take for granted the little things? I've been away for a little while. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update and share a personal victory with me around trauma and intimate partner homicide that I had recently. Hi, if you're new here, my name is April Hardy and on this channel we talk primarily about intimate partner homicide and things around domestic violence that lead up to intimate partner homicide. If you are not new here, welcome back. I feel very out of practice being on camera. I haven't been on camera in a month or so probably and it's been really helpful. We are working on adjusting school schedules and so many other things right now so I've really really needed and appreciated the extra time kind of stepping back from a lot of YouTube. But I've missed you guys. I have talked to a couple of you through email or through the comments and I appreciate that. I, I love being able to connect with you guys. And I thought I would share a victory that I had recently. You know, even if I get off of YouTube, it does not mean trauma stops. For some reason, trauma is just a part of my life that is never ending. People come to me with trauma. I deal with my own trauma. I deal with trauma stuff on here. I deal with trauma stuff with my youth group. My kids have been through trauma, et cetera, et cetera. It's pretty well everywhere. Last weekend, I got called to a house with somebody who had been sexually assaulted and she was pretty beside herself and she was angry at how vulnerable she felt. And she was not loving trauma and she's not new to trauma but sexual assault is a fairly new thing for her. Somebody tried to rape her and it wasn't successful, but he still successfully traumatized her in her home. She was suicidal. She was just having a really, really rough time. Sexual trauma is just one of those things is some of the most intimate, close, personal trauma that there is next to somebody taking your life or threatening to take your life. And so we were talking about the different effects of trauma that she was going through and that she was experiencing. And all I could tell her was, this is normal. Unfortunately, this is normal. That symptom is normal. This symptom is normal. You're not crazy. You're not weak. There's nothing wrong with you. You are a person who is going through trauma. And she was angry because she wanted to be over this already. She wanted to be done crying. She was sick of crying. She didn't want to be scared. She wanted to act like it didn't happen, which is super common and normal for sexual trauma in particular. People want to just act like it didn't happen and try to go on with their lives. She wanted to medicate herself so that she would sleep. And like the thing is, whether you deal with this now or you deal with this in two days when you wake up, it's going to be there. Trauma's there until you deal with it. And I was talking to one of my viewers yesterday about fear and fear from trauma versus fear as a response, letting you know that you're in danger, which is very important and not something that you want to ignore. But then there's also trauma fear. You guys are my community. And a lot of times I don't get to share, I don't share a whole lot personally with you. Honestly, it's still not safe for me to share a lot of things publicly. So I don't, but I wanted to share something with you guys. During this time that I have been off of YouTube, I had a birthday, 39, the last year before I turned 40, something. <laughs> I haven't decided yet what it is, it's something. But I got my ears pierced for my 39th birthday on my birthday. And that is a small thing to a lot of people, but for me it was huge and intentional and my way of saying I'm done with this particular type of trauma. I have never had my ears pierced by a professional. When I was in high school, I pierced my own ears and other people's ears, but I have never had a piercing gun put up to my head because when I was 15 or 16, I had my first experience with intimate partner homicide. I didn't put this together until way later that this was a, a thing in my life so long ago. So I got into a car with a guy that I knew, well, two guys that I knew, one that I was kind of cool with. I wouldn't say we were friends, but we hung out because he was interested in my best friend. And he had with him this other guy that I did not like, who had previously raped me, who I did not trust, but it was a smaller town and 
you run into those people all the time. So him being around wasn't necessarily anything new, but he was drunk, also not new, and he had just had a breakup. His girlfriend had dumped him that day. And he came from an abuse background. I'm pretty sure that, that their dad beat their mother when they were together and probably beat their kids. And so this guy did not relate well to others and he finally found this girl who took him seriously and cared about him yada yada i don't know why they broke up but they broke up she broke up with him and so he was drunk and he was angry and he was already a crappy person and a violent person so i got in the car with him we're driving around i'm in the back seat he suggests to his friend who i'm cool with that they take me out into the country and gang rape me so that he can get some anger out on a female because he can't do it to his ex-girlfriend and fortunately for me, the guy that was driving said no. So the guy in the passenger seat, even more angry now because he can't take his rage out on me, he has him taken back to his car. But for whatever reason, the driver has a handgun in the passenger side door of his car. I don't have any idea why. But when the guy got out of the car, he grabbed the handgun and he pointed it at my head and told me he was going to kill me. And... I believe it was nothing short of the grace of God that he didn't. Instead of shooting me in the head, which I fully believed he was going to do, he pointed it up in the air at the last second and shot into the air instead. And then he took the gun with him, shooting out of his vehicle as he was driving towards his now ex-girlfriend's house because he was going to go shoot up her house. I was traumatized, obviously because I had almost died. And I fully expected to wake up the next day to hear about dead people down the road from my house who had been shot. I think that in reality, he ran out of ammunition before he got there, which is good. And at that point, I had no idea what intimate partner homicide was, okay? I, I didn't know it was a thing. It hadn't reared its ugly head in my life. Yet at that point, when somebody breaks a relationship and for 12 months afterwards, it is the most dangerous time. We were in high school and her life was at risk because she ended a relationship. Still follows suit, same pattern that I have since learned is a thing for intimate partner homicide. It's not new. It's just something that I became aware of when it was a threat to me. After this threat that I, I hadn't put together for years. So anyway, long story short, it took me 17 years to go and get my ears pierced. 17, 18 years, almost 20 years to go and get my ears pierced professionally because I was like, I am not going to let somebody put something with the word gun in it up to my head and intentionally shoot a hole through my head. It's not happening. I've said that for a long time. Not because there was any threat of me dying because of getting my ears pierced, and I knew that, but it was a trauma fear that has held me captive for almost 20 years. So this was a victory. I'm excited. I haven't had my ears pierced in a long time because they closed a long, long time ago. So I'm, I'm getting to share this with you guys and that's really cool. That particular trauma in that way doesn't have a hold on me now. I stood up to it finally. That was my birthday victory that I wanted to share with you. Since it's been a while since I've been on here and I haven't had the opportunity to say it, if you are concerned about your relationship, most fear is there to be a signal to you that something is wrong. If your relationship scares you, if you are afraid for your safety, you are in danger. We are really, really good at justifying and rationalizing fear and trying to stuff it down and make it go away because we don't wanna deal with the reality of the situation that we're afraid of. It's so much easier to try to stuff it down than it is to say, you know what the reality is? This person could kill me. That is scary and terrible. And when you admit that it's real, it's like opening up a can of worms. I know I've been there. And you don't want to open that. You just want to act like it's not there. Just like that, that woman did that was sexually assaulted recently. I just want to go on with my life and act like it's not there. But just like those emotions and that trauma aren't gonna go away, you're not in any less danger if you don't acknowledge the reality of your situation. In fact, you're in more danger growing over time. So the longer that you wait to really acknowledge the danger that you're in, 
the more danger you're probably in. So you can call the number on the screen. This is the National Domestic Violence Hotline. It is the easiest resource for me to point you to because it's national and they have access to resources all over the country. So they can point you to resources that are where you are locally in the United States, at least. If you don't live in the United States, please look for resources where you are. A couple of months ago, before I took a little bit of a break from YouTube, I, I got the opportunity to go on a trip across the ocean. And I got to go to a country where things are still extremely traditional. We'll just say that that way nicely. The wonderful country, the people were so kind. Women do not have a lot of rights, in particular in villages and small towns. You know, the cities are a little bit more progressive. but. Domestic violence is something that is very, very much dealt with in the shadows there. And in the United States, we complain, and we have a right to complain, about the way that it's handled, because a lot of times it's not handled well. Our justice system is not set up for it. The police system, a lot of times, are not trained well enough for it. And quite frankly, the public doesn't understand it. But I am extremely grateful for our broken system after coming back from a country where they have no system at all. In this country, there was a coffee shop that we went to a bunch while we were there whose proceeds went to helping victims of domestic violence. It wasn't a government thing, but there were victims that were standing up and saying, hey, we want to support each other. Find resources. Find something. Thank you for being a part of this community. Thank you for spreading the word, which you're still encouraged to do while I'm taking a little bit of a break. And the information is still important, it still needs to get out there. Feel free to reach out. I look forward to hearing from you. Until I see you again, please stay safe.